Shakespeare wrote about them, birds live in them, and we walk in them. They have been the site of so much natural interest in some countries, and the cause of war in others. They crop up in the most unnatural of places, even at the back of a wardrobe. From myth and fairy tale to the real world that both you and I live in, woods and forests are inspiring places to explore. But what's the difference? Join me on a journey in this episode five of The Difference of Dan to some of our most prized woods and forests to discover the difference. Both you and I are in for a big surprise. Every one of us has probably walked through a woodland or forest of some sort at some point in our lives, yet seldom know whether it was actually a woodland or whether it was a forest. So what is it about them that makes them different? Let's head to a forest, and not just any old forest. Britain's largest lowland forest, it's Fetford Forest. Okay, it's hardly gnarlier, but it's on the hot list for its size. Twenty-eight thousand hectares in fact. You wouldn't want to get lost in here. But then the first characteristic of a forest is its large size. It's debatable, but many suggest that trees also have to be over five metres high for it to be a forest. Having trees over five metres is okay, but it's also the type of tree that determines whether it's a woodland or whether it's a forest. Here in Fetford Forest, the trees are evergreen, which means they keep their leaves on the trees all year round. And some trees in the forest can be deciduous as well, which means that they shred their leaves over autumn and grow new fresh ones in the spring and summer. And with evergreen comes another characteristic. And to demonstrate this, we need to go in. I'm really in the heart and the core of Fetford Forest now, and it's getting quite spooky. I've got rustling of leaves by squirrels over there and birds fluttering their wings somewhere over there. It reminded me of those fairy tales I used to read as a kid. The reason why you can't see me as clearly is not because there's something gone wrong with your computer, but because forests, just like this in Thetford, are continuously in the shade. If you look up, the canopy above is like a jigsaw and very close and compact, meaning very little light manages to reach the forest floor. No light means no growth, and it's quite clear here in Fetford Forest that there's very little undergrowth. But up in North Norfolk, in a very secluded village, is our largest remaining ancient woodland, and one that's teeming of life on the woodland floor. This is Foxley Wood, and in springtime up to 250 plant species appear, including these, bluebells. Bluebells aren't in abundance in the world. In fact, there's more in this country than there is anywhere else in the world. All thanks to the fact that woodlands are deciduous and let more sunlight in these bluebells will continue to thrive. The fact that woodland is deciduous brings about another benefit, and I've travelled here to Damgate Wood, not very far from where I live in fact, to investigate. 
When leaves fall during autumn, their role doesn't just stop. A very important process takes place. They decay, and in doing so, providing a rich nutrient source for the woodland floor. This type of woodland that's formed out of neglected fenland is called car woodland, and here in the broads, car woodland is very prevalent. Whereas forests grow in quite high density, woodlands are not that dense, meaning you can walk with your dog on a Sunday afternoon through them. But they're much more important than that. The Mediterranean climate is, let's face it, a bit hotter than good old Britain, and yet sometimes maybe a little too hot. But some islands have catered for the tourists, who maybe are a bit sweaty on the brow. Take the Seven Springs in Rhodes Island. It's been described as a lush heaven. Great result from visiting naturalists. It comes alive really in spring, but come any time of the year, and there's always something in store for you. It's the perfect antidote to long, hot summer days spent sightseeing in the towns. So, in summary, a forest is greatest in size. It's evergreen and has continuous shade due to a high compact canopy layer. But to see the teddy bears at their picnic, well you need to visit a woodland. Smaller, deciduous, with more sunlight and a greater diversity of plants on the woodland floor. <laughs>